name is Ashton Reynolds. I play drums. I'm Nick Biagini, and I play the tenor saxophone. Jerome Pitts, I play the piano. Jeremy Turgeon, I play the trumpet and the flugelhorn. I'm Forrest Lewis Dumont, and I play the bass. I would see it's more towards genres than individual influences, you know, like me growing up in the gospel influence of church, you know what I mean? And then branching off to jazz, you meet, meet, meeting excellent people like Jerome, you know, uh, Jeremy Turgeon. But I would say the main individual in the band, though, would be Earth, Wind, and Fire. I'm influenced by everything and everybody for the most part, but if I had to mention my musical influences, I would say Duke Ellington, Oscar Peterson, uh, Nat King Cole, uh, and Michael Jackson. Quincy Jones. I think the list is just maybe long. more. Yeah. There's mine. <laughs> uh, so my musical influences. I mean, when I first picked up the trumpet, one of the first videos I ever heard was a Wynton Marsalis video. So Wynton became like a major influence for me when I first started, and then as I branched out and, and got more invested in the instrument, I learned about, you know, Miles and Freddie Hubbard and all these greats. Now a lot of my inspiration comes from like Robert Glasper and Layla Hathaway, yeah. like I take a lot of those influences both when I play and, and when I write music. When I started, I was a, I, I started on Barry, so I checked out a lot of like Ronnie Huber, Pepper Adams, Jerry Mulligan, and then kind of when I started transitioning, I checked out like a lot of Coltrane, Charles Lloyd. Someone I've been checking out recently that I, I love is, is Walter Smith. I feel like he's been inter mm. influencing me a lot. Don McCaslin, I really love Braxton Cook. It's awesome. I have like a, an exceedingly eclectic grouping of music that comes into me and I try and emulate it and make it my own. And so that comes in like a lot of rock and roll, a lot of pop music, a lot of R&B, a lot of reggae. More recently, it's been a lot of like hip hop stuff and like you know, I, I feel as a bass player, it's kind of impossible to escape the, the influence of Jaco Pastorius. So he was definitely one of like the initial big, big targets for me, being like, oh my god, like bass players can actually be like really talented. When you're <laughs> um, and then like more recently, it's been like Michael League and Snarky Puppy and those guys and Glasper and Derek Hodge, all those kinds of people. Oh yeah. So, so I was primarily self-taught um, up until like the end of my high school career. I got the opportunity to study with Eric Berlin at, at UMass Amherst and then that was really it until I went to college. I went to Berkeley and got to study with Scott de Ogburn and Charlie Lewis and Christine Fawson and that was really where I had like consistent private lessons. Everything else was pretty much like self-taught so it was like, oh I like this, I'm going to figure it out. I'll definitely say that I was a, a late bloomer in that sense. Um, as far as music education goes, but uh, I already fell in love with the instrument, so it was just like, okay, like let's learn more, let's do as much as possible. I'm definitely self-taught. My father is a musician, and he's also a singer, and he was in a lot of groups back in the 70s and stuff, and he used to move around. And I used to watch him learn music like real fast, and I used to be like, yo, I don't even understand how he's doing that. Like, <laughs> and now you do it. And, and now you do it, right. In less than three minutes, come on, man. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to be done with that. You know what I mean? So I started playing around with that, and my father would show me songs. You know, he would show me how to play songs, but I still didn't like really know the theory. I didn't start messing with theory until I got like out of high school and started like going to Connecticut. I moved to Connecticut for a little while when I had my first son and when I was in Connecticut I linked up with a lot of musicians. But one musician in particular, his name is Jazz Joyner. That is the godfather the man. of who I am right now. I went to a really, really good performing arts high school in the area and that like that really got the ball rolling for me in terms of like realizing how to play with other people and like what it is to play in an ensemble and that kind of thing. Um, and then from there, I ended up going uh, to community college in the area and getting to work with a really, really wonderful educator named uh, Robert Ferrier. And he, he really like inspired me to like learn what jazz was and like you know learn some vocabulary and understand the music and get into the music and how to use it as an expressive tool more than anything else. And then from there, I, I ended up transferring to UMass where I've been for the past couple of years. And uh, I've, I've had a lot of really, really wonderful, wonderful mentors there. So I, I feel really blessed to have had the, the background and, and education that I've had so far. And just thanks to all my wonderful teachers. Growing up, uh, my father was a professional French horn player, still is. 
and my <laughs> sister played, and so I, I grew up around the music. <clears throat> then about high school, I met some guys that were a lot older than me, and they uh, they were really killing. Eric Stillwell and Lars Borchapel, and they're doing great things, and they kind of took me under their wing, and I learned a lot from them about improvised music and jazz. And then they graduated, and then I was kind of like high and dry, so then I started driving into Boston to uh, take lessons with this guy, Mark Seleski, and he taught me a ton, and I owe him a lot. And then also uh, Rick McLaughlin was another one who really showed me a lot in high school, and then I went to UMass, so that's where I met Forrest, and then I, I got to study with a lot of great professors too, um, Jeff Holmes, Felipe Salas, uh, Tom John Pietro, all, all great guys, and wonderful educators, and I've learned a ton from them. And I've learned a ton from these guys too. It's been fun, you know. Most of my work and um, practice has taken place at Basement University. Our debut single as a quintet, again, uh, features Nichelle Mungo, who's a voice professor at Berkeley, and um, it's been well received all over um, the US and, and even in Europe now, which is really, really great, and we're, we're really, really thankful for that. So that helped us uh, boost our, our publicity a little bit and, uh, and help get the word out about the band. As, as great as the music is, it's only going to do so well if people know about it. You know, so uh, after uh, we did a, a five-track EP, before we had a sax player, we were like, all right, I think it's time. I think it's time to do a full-length record. We created it around the, the thought process of exactly what the title is, what matters most. There are, you know, it's really easy to, to lose sight of what actually matters to you and what makes you who you are, like the essence of you. Somebody would bring in a piece of music, like there's a track on there that Forrest wrote, a track that Ash wrote, Jero and I wrote a bunch of music. Mm -hmm. The year that we spent writing and, and, and recording was a pretty tumultuous year for me, so there's a lot of emotion that went into writing some of that, some of that music and, and bringing it to the guys and being like, alright, here's why I wrote what I wrote. We also did a, a, a piece um, entitled Holding On, which uh, is a a tribute um, to our original singer Ronald Lane who passed away a little over a year ago from uh, from brain cancer uh, after moving back to Mississippi so that was a that was a really emotional and powerful piece to arrange and we're happy that we were able to do it. The individual has their core idea that they want to present and that they want their song to be but then it's it's totally our individual voices that come out from there because I don't know. We we just like it's it's very an equal balance of power in terms of like oh like I think this would be great right there. So uh -huh. we end up Let's doing try it. it. Yeah, yeah. yeah it, it's, always, <laughs> it's always been like really really naturally flowing and just like wonderful. I think all of our experiences collectively together translated into this sophomore project. You know, as far as where we really wanted to go, we went back down memory lane in ourselves and you know what I mean, thought about where we came from and where we want to go and then translated that into every song that we presented on the sophomore album. That's, that's for our... Mm. Cool.